What is going on everybody, Zionic here, and in today's video we have a triple shadow battle league submission from none other than super shadow number zero in the ultra league. Nidal Queen, Walrein, and a shiny Charizard. All right, getting into the first battle, we have Walrein on the lead versus Scrafty. Okay, this is definitely going to be a tough matchup right here as they look to safe swap into Nidal Queen and in comes a Jellison. So, Jellison definitely has the upper hand right here with its typing and moveset as it does have a Access to surf now with the recent update earth power does land for a good amount of neutral damage and ultimately in this situation you want to just try your best to get the jellison as low as possible if you are the nidoqueen queen now it's interesting that they went for a shadow ball right there maybe they do have bubble beam instead as that is still a viable charge move to have but the nidoqueen queen now is able to land a poison fang so they're going to go ahead and let this next charge move go through and it it is in fact a bubble beam that is a good call right there as they decide to let it go now Walrein this is actually very advantageous for Walrein as they can load up on energy and safely tank one shadow ball here as it's not going to be enough to KO Shadow Ball does land for a good amount of damage, and they can fully farm down, setting themselves up to unleash a lot of charge moves here against the Scrafty, as both Ice School Spear and Earthquake do a lot of neutral damage. Here comes the Ice School Spear. We will see a second one be thrown, and then we might see that swap out now into Charizard, which is what this game is going to be relying on. Scrafty falling before below 50% HP, and we have a Charizard Mirror. This is going to be very interesting, as they are very far ahead on energy right now and dragon claw is going to do quite a bit of neutral damage in this matchup now obviously blast burn is the harder hitting move but with two shields up you just want to be going for these Dragon Claws as they now are going to be forced to shield the second one. And this is going to come down to the wire. Can they actually sneak through a Blast Burn here from the opponent? No, they're going to go ahead and go for a Dragon Claw to try to force that final shield now. And they might have enough energy to go for Blast Burn. No, the opponent lets it go through. They're going to go ahead and throw one final Dragon Claw. And now they might need to swap back into Wall Rain, which they do at the exact same time that Scrafty comes in. But unfortunately, Scrafty is forced to throw its energy as Walrein would have gotten to the Icicle Spear right there. And now Charizard might just be able to farm down, which they can, and they have a Blast Burn ready to go. Charizard looking mean right now in its shadow form. Boom, takes it down. Good first game. All right, moving to the next one. We have Walrein versus Muck. All right, a pretty decent lead matchup right here as they do have access to Earthquake. And this is a great opportunity for them to completely get rid of Muck or just force early shields in this game. They're going to go ahead and let that first charge move go through as it is going to be a Dark Pulse. And now they're going to look to go straight for the Earthquake. Both Nidoqueen Queen and Charizard do well with shield advantage. So this could be setting themselves up and they do get a shield. So in comes the Charizard right away to get ahead on energy. And in comes a Blastoise with, sun, uh, with uh, sunglasses right there. Now they do go for Blast Burn here, and this may be counterintuitive if you're thinking about typings, but Blast Burn is such a hard hitting charge move from Community Day that it's actually more advantageous to go for it in situations like this because of how much damage it can do. Now, unfortunately, they can't farm, or they get farmed down by the Blastoise, and now they're going to be forced to come in with Wall Rain right here as the Nidoqueen would be taking super effective damage from both Water Gun and Hydro Cannon. Now they're going to go ahead and give up a shield as it is going to be Hydro Cannon. Hopefully they don't have two. Oh, that's unfortunate. They do have two. So now it's going to be up to Nidoqueen to try to win this game. No, they do survive and they they swap right away as the Muck now comes in. And this is actually a very dangerous situation here for Nidoqueen as Dark Pulse does quite a bit of neutral damage. In order to KO the Muck, they have to land the Earth Power, which is actually quite a bit of energy. And they don't even over farm. They just go for it right away, trying to get rid of the Muck. And they do. Final Pokemon is going to be Kabalion, and this is actually looking very advantageous for them, as Kabalion can only do resisted damage here with its moveset as Sacred Sword and Stone Edge are going to be resisted, and Earth Power now is a deadly threat. They're going to go ahead and go for the Poison Fang debuff. Will the opponent give up their final shield? Yes, they do. Here we go. Get ready for a potential sack swap, as the opponent, I believe does have another their final point they do watch for the sack swap no they went for the charge move right away this is getting extremely dangerous the sacred sword is gonna land the opponent 
Swap. Oh, they did swap out into Blastoise, and now the Earth Power is going to be landing. This is coming from a Shadow Nidoqueen Queen as super effective damage. Will one shot. Boom! One shots the Kabalion. Good game. All right, moving to the next one. We have Walrein versus Scrafty. Once again on the lead, I hope I didn't put in. They bring in the Nidoqueen. Queen. Hopefully, I didn't put in the second video. Okay, I think we're fine. This is a different battle as last time the Scrafty swapped out right away. So we will see them decide to no shield the foul play right here. And let's see what that final... Oh, they must be weak in the back. Clearly they are as they're not swapping out. So it could be steels, could be fairies. We'll have to find out as Earth Power does land for an incredible amount of damage and it is going to be a fairy. So it's going to be a wheezing back there, which is going to be weak to Earth Power as well, thanks to its typing. And they do get a shield with Poison Fang. This is now turning into a dangerous situation for the opponent. As we know, Charizard with two shields can be extremely deadly, but they're going to go ahead and stop that brutal swing as they go for another Poison Fang, hoping to get this wheezing out of there. It's not going to be enough damage to KO. But at least they can drop the defenses and now swap back into wall rain to fully farm down. But they need to watch out for those hard hitting charge moves like an overheat, which might be coming through right here. Wall rain easily can survive though. And here comes another one. This is looking to be just a brutal swing as they can't throw back to back overheats as wall rain lets it go. The scrafty comes right back in, but now it is trapped and perfect for the pickings here of Charizard if they decide to give up a shield and wall right now looking to go for no damage done on the ice school spear so that Charizard and both opponents know this is a unique situation that you will find in go battle league and in pvp where the advantage is given to the opponent who can get the most energy and Charizard now comes right in saving wall rain as a potential sack swap and the final pokemon is going to be a shadow drapeon got to remember switch clock as well is going to be up soon for the opponent as they do have the Galarian wheezing in the back, but here comes the Dragon Claw. No shield there. Dangerous call by the opponent not to shield, but they're going to go ahead and look to stop the crunch as we it may not have Aqua Tail here. We would have seen Aqua Tail if they were going to throw it, but now the opponent makes a beautiful sack swap, catching the Dragon Claw, and they're going to go ahead and undercharge it as it will take it out. And unfortunately, I think this is still going to be a good game as there is a Nidoqueen Queen in the back. Switch Clock is coming back up. Let's see if Charizard can catch it. Here comes the Switch Clock. No, the charge move is going to be coming through. So this is going to be a very close end game as Sludge Bomb, boom, takes out the Charizard. In comes the Nidoqueen, Queen. And now they're going to have to sack swap into Walrein. And they do. They make a beautiful catch right here as Walrein is going to be soaking the crunch damage. And Nidoqueen Queen can go for Poison Fang to close this game out. Out. and that's what these games come down to sometimes saving that Pokemon with one HP in order to make a sacrificial swap all right moving to the next one we have Tapu Fini here on the lead so they're looking to stay in as they can do quite a bit of neutral damage with that earthquake but they do need to watch out for the potential moon blast here as they decide to go for the ice cold spear but it looks to be a CMP tie as Tapu Fini now throwing that moon blast for a lot of neutral damage and here comes the ice cold spear but will the opponent respect the potential earthquake no, they decide to let it go as now they're going to be racing to the earthquake here and they're going to go ahead and go for another ice school spear. The opponent might not even shield this. Let's see what happens. Yeah, another no shield. This is looking so dangerous for wall rain now as they could be taken out with just one surf as Tapu Fini is able to survive the triple ice school spear and we see a swap out now into Charizard and they get to the ice school spear in time you got to remember tapu fini has loaded energy so you got to be careful about a surf on the back end and we will see them decide to save wall rain this is something you guys need to be doing as you can continue to climb and go battle league because saving that pokemon for a sack swap like we saw in the previous matchup is so crucial here comes the dragon claw now from this Charizard. Will we see a shield from the opponent? No, they're going to let it go. And here comes another one. They're going to no shield this as well. Trusting in Nidoqueen to close this game out. We know there's Tapu Fini. Charizard's low. They should be able to farm down with Poison Jab. Tapu Fini might just have a Surf. And we don't know what that final Pokemon is. But Nidoqueen is looking primed as it's going to be a Berserker right here. They do have the Earth Power. And the opponent might try to make a Sack Swap. But they get to throw the Earth Power now. Forcing Shield number one. Or Shield number two, I should say. From the Berserker. And it's all going to be up to the opponent. If they can catch the charge move on Nidoqueen. It is over for Super Shadow number 0. But if Super Shadow number 0 can land this Earth Power. 
It's going to be booming that Berserker, and this is where things get dangerous. Remember, Tapu Fini might have a Surf. Get ready for a fast swap in. Here it comes in a counter swap to catch the charge move. The quick reactions from Super Shadow number zero. Taking down the Tapu Fini and going for the Earth Power here to one shot the Berserker thanks to its steel typing. Nidal Queen proving to be extremely strong still. Boom! In the meta. All right, moving to the next one. We have Walrein versus Verizion, a shiny one at that. So this is a interesting matchup as they decide to swap out now and a Galarian Stunfisk is gonna come in. It's interesting because both Pokemon do super effective damage to each other. That grass typing on the Verizion, the ice typing on Walrein, both of them are gonna be hitting each other. And as we do see a shield go up there on the first earth power now, here comes the first charge move from Galarian Stunfisk. They're going to go ahead and let it go. And it is the Earthquake as Nidoqueen goes down. And Walrein now needs to make quick work of Galarian Stunfisk and hope that nothing in the back is an extreme hard counter to Charizard as it could potentially sweep. Here comes the double rock slide. Do you give up one more shield here? No, they're going to let it go. And the opponent might just read that they want to sweep with their third Pokemon. So if they give up a shield to stop this earthquake, it might be all over. They do. So they got to swap out now in a Charizard right away and try to get to a blast burn as quickly as possible because these rock slides will be one shotting. And if you are the opponent right now, you got to get out of there as the Blast Burn will one-shot. And they do just that. They can now go for their own Blast Burn to one-shot Verizion. We don't know what the final Pokemon is, but Charizard, boom, makes quick work of Verizion. Here it comes. Is it going to be the Galarian Stunfisk? I don't think it's going to be. It's going to be that third Pokemon. It's going to be a Drapion. This is very, very dangerous. Drapion, if it has access to Aqua Tail, might just be able to take down. No! That does an incredible amount of damage, and they can easily no shield this as the Rock Slide is the hardest hitting move left in the game. Aqua Tail, not enough to take them down. In comes the Galarian Stunfisk, and Charizard pulls off the full sweep right there. Good game. All right, moving into the next one. We have Walrein versus Scrafty once again on the lead. We're going to see that Nidal Queen come in right away and get a head on energy. The opponent looking to swap out now, and it comes in with the Lola Nine Tails. Nidal Queen is still the queen of the meta as it's going to be locking down this Alolan Ninetales and that was a poor mistake because Nidal Queen not only with Poison Jab and Poison Fang but it can oh my goodness this Alolan Ninetales is regretting their decision right here as Nidal Queen can safely double shield and take it out they're going to go ahead and no shield the Weather Ball oh no this is looking pretty dangerous they're going to look to un huh? It's an iffy situation. Poison jab. No, they want to go down. Interesting that they don't want to take switch right there. They want to come in with wall rain. They want to load up on energy. And let's see how they decide to play this out. Scrafty likely looking to come back in. As they're going to look to go for the earthquake. Charge move now coming through. This might just be a power up punch right here. Yeah, it is going to be the power up punch. Doesn't do too much damage. They can now go for the earthquake. And after this, they need to swap out into that Charizard and be careful about a foul play. It does land. Here comes the Charizard. The opponent's deciding to swap out. It's going to be a Tentacruel in the back. Talk about hard counters. Now, unfortunately for Charizard here, they're going to take a lot of damage from Poison Jab and Scald. But Tentacruel, this game is not over. Let's see if this is going to be an Acid Spray. No, it is going to be the Skull Charizard. Might have a chance now if they can get back-to-back -back Dragon Claws in order to take it out. Overloading on a ton of energy. And here comes the Dragon Claw. Will we see a shield? And I think Switch Clock is coming back up. No, not there yet. They do get to the Blast Burn in time. Charizard overcoming every obstacle right here. Boom! Takes out the Tentacruel. In comes the Scrafty. They counter swap. Back into the wall rain now to catch the foul play. No, it was just a power-up punch. Now it's going to be a race. Do they get to the Ice School Spear in time? No, they do not. The Scrafty decided to throw the charge move. And that is looking to be a good game as Charizard with one fast move ten can take out the Scrafty. Wow, what a close one right there. All right, moving to the next one. We got wall rain versus wall rain. Mirror fight. Earthquake looking to be the charge move of choice here it's going to be doing a lot of neutral damage in this matchup now we do see a beautiful swap into the charizard from the opponent and this earthquake is still going to do a good amount of damage even though that's heavily resisted 
that still put in some work. Now we will see a Poison Fang come through right here as it's going to hope to get this Charizard low and commit to the farm down. But they might just need to give up. Yeah, they might need to give up a shield here. Are they going to let the Blast Burn go through? Yes, they are. Nidoqueen Queen barely hanging on. And they're going to let them get them lower. Oh, no, they didn't count the fast moves correctly. Oh, that is so unfortunate. So what they're hoping for is to get let the Nidoqueen Queen get lower so Walrein can load up on energy. Now we're going to see Charizard actually come in and farm down. This is going to be very interesting. What's deciding to come in? It's going to be a Swampert. Uh-oh. They have an uphill battle now as they're going to go ahead and go for Dragon Claw. But the thing is, they have an opportunity to catch a potential Hydro Cannon here on their own wall rain, which might be the play of choice as they do catch the resisted charge move now on their own shadow wall rain and the opponent now swapping right back in has an earthquake locked and loaded they're gonna go ahead and shield and now we have that lead matchup starting right back over but now they need to be going for ice school spear here and hope that they can get a shield if the opponent calls this correctly no, they don't. They do get a shield. This opens up the door for them to potentially land an earthquake as I think they can survive one. Can they survive? Yeah, they should be able to survive as they can now go for their own earthquake. And remember, Swampert does have some energy and it does have a shield. And now we will see the swap right back out to catch this next high school spear. They have to let it go. Hydro Cannon is the move that will KO. And this is going to be a very, very close battle as they're going to go ahead and go for Dragon Claw now to try to force a shield from Wall Rain and get it out of there because one Ice School Spear will take out a Charizard and they do get a shield. The opponent now risking it all. Let's see. Are they? Yeah, they're going to go ahead and shield. Watch out for the counter swap into Swampert. Here it comes and they go for the Blast Burn. Charizard, are you the dominant starter? We will find out. Boom! One shot. No! The Swampert survived with one HP. It's going to be up to Wall Rain now to farm down. They get the Powder Snow through. It's going to be a race to the charge move. And they get to it in time. But is this going to be enough damage? My goodness, what a back and forth right here. And it is. Wow! What a comeback from Super Shadow number zero. Moving to the next one. We got Wall Rain versus Galarian Stunfisk. Okay, let's see how this one goes. They're going to go ahead and both stay in. Rock Slide, got to watch out for it from the Galarian Stunfisk. And obviously, Earthquake here from Wall Rain needs to be feared by the Galarian Stunfisk. Here comes the charge move. Just going to be Rock Slides. And the thing is, with the backline that you do have, Charizard and the Shadow Nidoqueen, Queen, Shadow Charizard as well. Um, you got to get rid of this Galarian Stunfisk, at least get it low because you are going to rely on that backline to potentially sweep as this lead is going to be the hard counter to it. Now they go ahead and go for the Earthquake here, trying to get that final shield from Galarian Stunfisk. And if they do, we might see... No, they're going to go ahead and stay in. I thought we might have saw, seen a swap out. Yes, they're trying to time the Rock Slide, but now this could be the Earthquake. Oh dear, Nittle Queen. Boom! Nearly one shots as they can now farm down and this is a very very dangerous situation as Galarian Stunfisk has energy Uh oh, it's gonna be up to Charizard to close this game out if the opponent plays this correctly They could just sweep the whole team with one Galarian Stunfisk here comes the ice school spear Hopefully it does enough damage to get this thing low enough for the Charizard to sweep here We go. Do they trust in Charizard? Yes, they are Oh my goodness, this is going to be a close one. In comes the Charizard. No shields left by the opponent. They have Amanda Buzz in the back. That is the thickest flyer out here. Charizard, you have a tall order to take down. Not only do you have to land two Blast Burns against Amanda Buzz, but you have to Blast Burn the Galarian Stunfisk, and you have to probably Blast Burn that third Pokemon. Now they give up a shield there on the foul play. Can they go for Dragon Claw? I don't think it's going to be enough damage. No, they have to go for Blast Burn right here. Dragon Claw was not going to be enough. And unfortunately, that is a lot of energy gone down. In comes the Galarian Stunfisk and they go for the Dragon Claw right away. This is going to be resisted, but it's coming from a Shadow Charizard. It's enough! Final Pokemon! Virizion! It's going to be a race to the charge move now. Can they get to the Blast Burn in time? No! Is this Stone Edge? No, it's a Leaf Blade! They survived! Charizard! 
full sweep right here as it's gonna be one-shotting the Verizion. Oh, you love to see it. Boom! See ya! Get out of here, Verizion. What a good battle. And that was the final. We always end on a good one. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Super Shadow number zero never seems to disappoint with Shadow Nidoqueen, Queen, Shadow Walrein, and Shadow Charizard. Like always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.